Hello, thanks for coming. Today we're going to talk about um, a patient whistle, start, develop, finish, watching the whole play, not blowing your whistle just because you think you see a foul, and it is a foul, but how does it, how, how does it develop? What happens? Is it worth holding your whistle and not blowing it? That's kind of what we're going to talk about today. So well, let's go ahead and start with our first video. Here it goes. All right, I'm going to play it fast again, and then we're going to dissect it. Official calls a foul, a pushing foul on the uh, end line. Do we like that call? I'm not saying the call is wrong. He probably pushed him reached in whatever we want but what happens what's he okay. trying to do what's he trying to do right now pass, pass. looks like his full intention is to pass the ball yes which he does to a wide open man who's going to put up a three so did we take the advantage away? And I know we don't ref with advantage, disadvantage, but did we take the advantage away from the red team by calling that foul? Was that foul egregious enough to make sure we get? Game stopper. He comes in, he kind of pushes him with his chest. Okay, I get that. But it didn't really do anything, did it? That is a foul where even if you're certain there's contact, you pushed them. If you just wait a second, see how the play develops. You can see that, okay, if I pass on that, the kid's going to go up for an open look for a three-point shot. Right? If he falls down, if he stumbles, if he causes him to not get the pass off cleanly, great. Then you watched that play develop into an action that was not able to be executed. And if that action can't be executed, then we can come in with a foul. Do we agree with that or disagree? Agree. agree. Okay. It's a little bit harder to watch the play and let it develop after we see the foul. It's a higher level of officiating to be able to watch the play and see him get fouled and not blow your whistle and wait to see, did that foul affect the play? Sometimes the foul is so egregious or so uh, large, but matter what, how it affects the play, it was enough where it caused this and it caused that and we got to get it right. But many times, and this is what separates good officials from great officials. Great officials who are working, you know, the NCAA and the NBA and, and high-level high school basketball games, they pass on a lot of contact that is not really a foul. Or that is a foul, but didn't really have any effect, and they let the game play on, so it doesn't interrupt the game. Looks like we have a foul by the trail i didn't see the leads hand go up the trail had a foul of the ball coming up right here all right but what happened what happened what's going on right now as the play starts what's happening he's bringing the ball up after a missed shot correct right all right Okay, so they're, it's not really a fast break, but they're, they're moving the ball up quickly to try and make something happen. And the defender is running from behind, right? Tries to get a seal and probably hits him. I'm not going to say he doesn't hit him. He probably does. Does the pass get passed successfully? Yes. Now, it does, but, but I think that's a good call. I, I think that's a good call myself okay you think it's a good call i'm gonna say this it's not a the wrong call because if there's contact there's a foul i get that but the ball got passed he didn't pass it because the guy was behind him he passed it because 
His man's right he, there. Yeah. And I yes, agree he hit that. him. And yes, he even had a little more contact because he was going so fast. And this makes it look worse because it looks like white filed black, which white did not. Do we agree with that? Yes, for sure. Right? Ran black made himself. But the ball got passed. I think even though that is a foul, that's a pass. Because it didn't affect the play, right? Now, Mike, and not to call you out, but you said you liked the call. Why do you like the call? Well, I, 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 I thought, you know, that he bumped him pretty good. And, you know, I think it, it didn't disrupt the play, but it certainly disrupted one of the players of, of the offensive team. So, and then as you see, they kept going and they were, you know, tangled up. So that's, that was my thinking. So I say it did, it did indeed interrupt that player, but it didn't keep him from making, tending to make, right? Yeah, I mean, you're, I can't argue with you, Josh. Um, and, but I do. and Mike, nobody, honestly, I don't think anybody is going to yell at you if you blow your whistle on that play, because the kid fouled him. He reached in and he hit him and he fouled him. And he shouldn't have done that. I got that. But also, nobody will yell at you if you pass on that foul. I don't think anyone will say anything because it didn't yeah. really affect anything. It wasn't egregious, that's for sure. Um, anybody else have an idea? Or You don't have to, but let me show another one then. There's no call on this play. He shoved him pretty good, didn't he? On the rebound. Didn't he give him a good shove? Yeah, he's, he's in his numbers for sure. Two hands he shoved him. Is anyone going to call that? I'm passing no on that. I think that oh. is a great, great no call. Again. Yes, it affected that player pretty dramatically, but he has, as a heads-up player, sees his teammate as wide open, and they get an easy two buckets because the officials allowed it. Uh, skipped a little bit, sorry. The officials allowed the pass to happen for an easy layup. Do we agree, by rule, this is a foul? For sure. Yes. Right? That contact is a foul. but. It is not a foul we want to call in this situation. Yep. We don't officiate by advantage, disadvantage, but we kind of do. We kind of have to, because if we called every little contact that by, that by rule says is a foul, we all the players would foul out. There is lots of contact that by rule is a foul. So we as officials have to judge play by play by play what contact caused an advantage or a disadvantage for the opponent, right? And in that opinion, I, I don't know, did anyone else think that that needed to be called? It was a two-hand. He did push him pretty good out of bounds, but nice pass, easy layup, two points. Everybody's happy, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, like you're saying, but if you did blow your whistle on that, that's when you would get yelled at because you're taking away a basket. Yeah, you know? and, and I, I don't mean, know. Well, no, I don't know if you would necessarily get yelled at. Um, I think a coach would be upset because that's you, what I, they that's want the two points. That's oh, right. That was two points. Now we didn't get it. But, yeah, he got fouled. He would agree that he probably got fouled. But the coach is probably happier if you don't blow your whistle and let them have the two points. My Especially point. in a boys game. The boys, they want those two points. They don't want, yeah, they want the foul too. They want the and one, but they want their points. Don't take my points away because he fouled me. I'd rather get my, you know, my two points. Well, that's where holding the whistle, you know, is, is main thing to do. Right? right. So if you see contact, don't blow your whistle right away. Right. If you see contact, say, okay, I got it. What happens? Nothing. Okay. Or Oh, he didn't get the pass off. Boop, I got it. Now, we can't obviously take 
five, six, seven seconds to talk right. it through in our brain. You got to do it relatively quickly within a second, maybe a second and a half, but over a second and a half to two seconds, everyone's like, what? That's a late call. And even though a late call is still the right call, you start then putting doubts in those that are watching, right? And we don't want them to doubt everything that we, we call, but. Hey, Josh. Yes. Do you uh, adjust how you call if it's like a rivalry game or if it's a little chippy out there? Do you kind of move away from the, let me do my slow whistle and, and just kind of pick up more? Michael, that is a, a great, great question. I'm going to say this. I do not. I call the game. I try to call the game the same regardless. However, if I know it's a rivalry game, I'm going to have a, a, a higher, excuse me, I'm going to have a heightened sense of, okay, that contact may turn into something greater. And so I'm going to watch more. I am going to watch the still start, develop, and finish. But I'm going to make sure that I don't let that develop into something that's going to fit to finish badly. And if the first play that turns into a little bit more than usual, yeah, I might then call a quicker foul. I usually personally let two, three, maybe four, a little aggressive, a little more nah, not brutal is not the right word, but foul to happen before I say, okay, we got we to gotta tighten it. Because a lot of the times the kids come out on those games with extra, uh, oh, what's the word? Energy. Adrenaline. Yeah, I mean, because they want to, they're going to beat them. They beat us every year. We're going to beat them this year. So they come out extra hard, not trying to cause problems, not trying to be flagrant, not trying to do things intentionally. They're just ex playing extra hard. And usually the kids will bring themselves down after one foul or two fouls, regular fouls. Um, so to answer your question, I do and I don't. I try to go into it even. Now, if a play, play uh, game starts to get chippy and it starts to heighten, yeah, I'm going to change the way I call my game. And I'm going to tell my partners, guys, we need to tighten this up. We need to start calling this a little bit closer, a little bit tighter, because it's going to get out of control. And if we lose you know, control of the game, then it's not good. Does that answer? It does. Thank you. Yep. Let's go to this next video. No problem. A lot of action, no whistle. A lot of action, no whistle. Does anybody see anything worth calling? I think that's a good no whistle. I think it's good. Yes. No. Uh, being very patient as to watching this play develop. What should we be watching for when the ball starts to scrum around like this? Players falling on players. I think I did fall on someone, but it, it, it did. I mean, the guy had no. I think that's a good no call. Now, he does roll on that guy, and I guess that's a foul for sure, but. He kind of rolls on him. Not, not like totally. What I'm looking for in a play like this, two things. Oh, well, actually, three things. One, is there a possible held ball? Right? Because what is a held ball? Sure. When two players are trying to have their hands on the ball so firmly that neither can get control without undue roughness. Okay. So not just that they both have the ball, not that they just both, you know, are grabbing the ball or tugging at it that you think it's going to elevate. Now, when players are on the ground, probably going to elevate to something a little more undue roughness. So you want to get maybe a little bit quicker. That's the first thing I'm going to look for. Second thing, someone said it players diving on other players to get to the ball, not necessarily to dive on the player and to crush them and to hurt them. They're trying to get the ball, but they just go through a player or dive on top of a player. So we have to watch and be ready for that. Do you, um, this is kind of about topic, but does that lead official, should he be rotating into that to get a better look or do you just leave it to the sea to catch all of that? No, the lead should be coming in and the trail should be coming in because how many players are there? 
Well, all of them. Almost all, all of them. All but one. Yeah. So the trail doesn't have to worry about that kid at the three-point line because nobody's going to follow him. He's not going to follow anybody. <laughs> right? So everybody needs to be watching this. Now, obviously, the center is right on top of it. And the center probably has the best look out of everybody. But, yes, the lead should be taking two, maybe three steps toward, maybe not rotate over, maybe rotate over, but at least come into the play. And the trail also should be coming into the play because a scrum like this, as we said, it can get ugly. And the lead just stands flat-footed and watches it. So, yeah, that's a good pickup. The center was all over there. That was excellent. The center was on. And you could see because, you know, as he was leaning in, and you know, he, he took was a couple of steps. Yeah. yeah. He is at the exact same angle as um, – he's at the exact same angle as the coach, right, that's watching. So if the lead or the trail calls something, the coach may not see that. If the center yeah. calls it, the coach probably saw exactly what the center called. It doesn't mean don't call it because you're not, you know, in the same perspective as the coach, but. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, just from the perspective is that, you know, if the C is looking for, you know, held ball or any of that, someone has to be looking for hands on back, pushing, um, you know, just the other stuff. They both can't, you know, you just can't, he was straight lined, the lead is straight lined into the back of players who could be pushing the other thing that I'm that I'm looking for, the, there's three things, held ball, players diving on players, and timeout requests, right? Because it could be very easy. The kid grabs the ball and yells for timeout or timeout as he's pulling it in. And we, as soon as we see it, if he's got it, we got to call it because if we don't, someone else may yank it from him. So those are the three things in my mind that I'm looking for. And obviously, when I say diving on players, you know, if there's swings or punches, we got to see those. But we're going to assume in most games, kids aren't going to swing or punch or push because that's not what they're there for. They want to get the ball, right? All right. One defense. A lot of substitutions in already for Sierra Canyon. They're so deep inside and a whistle and a foul call on the inside. Okay. We have a whistle on the play. What do you guys think? One defense. A lot of substitutions in already for Sierra Canyon. They're so deep inside and a whistle and a foul call on the inside. Comments? I didn't see any foul. Uh, he could have had the opportunity to pass because just like the other video, we have that guy who's staying close to that three-point line that could have had it easily a pass and an opportunity at a shot number 34 there. All right, but it looks like he's going. What is he trying to do right now, the white player? He's going up for a shot. Going for he's a shot. going up for a shot. Okay, so we're watching this play start with a player who wants to attempt a try for a goal. Obviously, the defender wants to stop him, yes? Yep. Right. Does he yeah. hit him in the back of the head? Looks like it. Yep. Yeah. Looks sure like did. it, right? I Why didn't the official blow his whistle? He just fouled him, and the official didn't blow his whistle. Well, well looks like it. You want to see if the ball went in. If the ball you goes in the, the basket, in. is that a foul you can pass on? Yes, absolutely. It didn't have hardly any effect on the player. He didn't hit him that hard. If the ball goes in the basket, you don't have to call that foul. Nobody's going to say, eh, well, you might hear some and ones, but he got fouled. In. No, they got their two points, and they go the other way. The official was waiting to see what happened. He watched the play start. It developed into a shot. He got fouled. The ball is coming down, and he misses the shot, probably because he got fouled. Boom, we got it. That's a foul. Because the foul caused the ball or the player not to be able to put the ball in the basket. Do we agree? Yeah, yes, yep, for sure. Again, for sure. this is much easier to watch re video and say, oh, yeah, okay, we got to do this. Because when we, we are trained, when we see a foul, he hits him, boop, I got it. Right? And the ball goes in and one, right? And everyone would be okay with that. Not a lot of contact, didn't have any effect. Oh, wait, he missed the, he missed the shot. Now it did have an effect. Foul. Everybody see that on that play? Yes. yes. I thought so.
No whistle. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fine no whistle. Excellent no call. Now, by rule, as the rule is written, is that a foul? Yes. Got him, but I mean, he he backed off, and and everyone went their way. That's a good no whistle. Okay, so by rule, he hits him going for the ball, and and kind of makes him go forward even. So it made him go forward. But Mike, to your point, he got the ball. I know this isn't a phrase that we should be using, but no harm, no foul, right? He got yeah, the ball. Yeah. He turned out. The kid left right away. He wasn't trying to hurt him. Yeah. I mean, the lead was, had a great angle, too. He was all on, he was all on top of it. I, I, I think it was a great no call. A lot of guys who are at this level of officiating, great is up here, okay? Good, you know, and then you got your, I think your average official is right around here. A lot of average officials are going to go, boop, I got that. That's over the back or that's a pusher. And they would be right. But those are the kind of plays where coaches do get frustrated because they don't want the foul. You just gave my player a foul and that other team, they don't even know it's a foul. Like, you know, both teams don't care for that to be a foul. They just want to play ball. All right. Again, easier said than done, but. Got a foul on this play. Watch it again. What do you think? Yeah, it's like the first one. I think he could have held it. He could have held it for sure. All right. So the play starts. What's he doing? He's on him. I mean, he's pushing him. What is the white player doing? Trying to go to the basket. Trying to drive to the basket to shoot. Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What happens then? Does he push him a little here? For sure. Yeah. But he makes a nice pass and totally pushes him. But that pass, he went up. Maybe he was going to shoot, but he saw all oh, crap. Three guys are coming on me, and my teammate is wide open. If you wait one second on even a half a second on that play, again, like that other one where they let it go and, and gave him an easy two points, Yeah, right? That's an easy no call because that push didn't really affect anything, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, he blew that whistle really quick. Um. Now, I say this almost every meeting, and I'm going to say it again. We're watching this clip, right? Sure. That game might have been a ball buster of a game, and he said, I'm getting it because if I don't get that, it's going to just get out of control. And so, right, we're not going to ever fault the officials because, again, that was a foul. He pushed him. But if you take that snippet out and you see the push happened, but he got a nice pass off and an easy two points, no call. Another quick whistle. Five on a hold before he goes up, which he looks like he does. Let me rewind it just a little bit. Right, he grabs him right there. Okay, but did it affect this player's ability to go up for a shot? No, he didn't call it on eleven. Who went up behind him? He called it on number five, but it didn't slow him down. It didn't change his rhythm, balance, quickness. I mean, it did. There was a slight, like, you know, kind of bump, pause, jerk, but the player went and he just continued and he went up. He missed the shot, but that wasn't because he got hit by five. Wait one second, watch the play develop, and see that that had no effect. Hey, we see this? Mm -hmm often enough post player receives the pass gets bumped from behind did it affect that player yes a little there but he got the ball right and he started to make his move is that something we can pass on yes 
Yeah, Anybody think good. we shouldn't pass on that? We got to get that. Pass. Uh, that's a tough one. That one's really right there, man. I, I mean, he, he's knocking them there. I know that that's a big guy and he held his own, but uh, I wouldn't uh, fault the ref for calling that one. All right. I wouldn't fault him for blowing his whistle either, which he did. But to your using your words, Mike, he's a big guy. He got bumped a little, but he wanted the ball to make his move. I'm going to wait and see what happens. He caught the ball, and now he's like, okay, great. We're, we're playing on. Now, again, that might be the third or fourth time that it's happened. Then fine, easy, quick one, get it. But if a player can play through it, I'm saying try to let them play through it more than calling the quick foul. Because every time we call those fouls, it's – it's a game interrupter, right? It stops the game, sure, both the game. progress. And now you might have a, a quarter, maybe even longer, of whistle, 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 whistle. Nobody likes to watch that. Not the players, not the fans, not the coaches, not the officials. Nobody likes that. They want to wow. see play back and forth and up and down and shot and pivot, right? So we have to really help facilitate that by holding our whistle on little calls like that. Hey, Josh. Yes. What 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 have uh, we talked about uh, that you've said to me on? Uh, you're judged on the whistle, the call you don't call, better than the call you do call. Yeah. So remember you said that. So I say this not often, but I say it a lot. Officials, you know, the the difference between a good official and a great official is not the calls that they make; it's the calls that they don't make. And I'm not talking about fans. They don't know. Even yeah. coaches and players don't necessarily know. But when you're being evaluated by other officials who can help you move up, if you're not moving up as fast as you think, you need to start really watching your, your game film and, and dissecting your no calls. Are the calls you're making, could you withhold your whistle and allow play to happen? Because a lot of times uh, evaluators aren't going to say, you know what, you're, you're just blowing your whistle too much. Because you usually, when you blow your whistle, you got the foul, but contact isn't necessarily a foul. So, yeah, the good officials, they get the fouls. The great officials allow some of that contact and, and don't blow the whistle. They get they make it a no call. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yeah. That's I one mean, thing. I don't want to sound chauvinist here, but I think it's a lot easier holding the whistle on a boy's – sophomore varsity game than it is on a girls game <laughs> well the boys for, seem to be able to okay I, I i can take this i still can have control and and like you say that it doesn't affect the play in the girls games it it really does right and, and if, if you don't get at it it seems like it really mushrooms well that's because they're not as skilled well that's not necessarily i think because and maybe that's partly to the point, but I think because we haven't really allowed these girls to be able to play through some contact. We've been getting the fouls all the time. And I agree with you, Mike, they're affected by the contact much more than the boys, but it's because the boys for years have been conditioned. I'm going to score. I don't care what you do to me. I'm going to score where girls haven't got to that point yet. And I think it's part of our faults. We're blowing our whistles too much. Let the kid have an opportunity to make, you know, oh, I got bumped, and they look at you like, why didn't I get the foul? Play through it. Yes, yeah, no. I think the, only, yeah, yes. the, only, the only time I, I, I would challenge that is, you know, you have some teams that their coach, you know, their coach presses the whole game, and that's part of their whole logic is, you know what, make the officials call, make officials make the whistle. So they're grabbing, they're holding, they're pushing, they're making it very, they're very aggressive, and it's to the disadvantage of the team that either doesn't have as much skill or can't, you know, play through that. Okay. So, I, I think that's, that's challenging. Yeah. Those, that's, those is, it's just challenging sometimes when there's a lot of skill on the floor, you let them play. Everybody's happy because you're letting them play. We're getting the up and down when it's mismatched, where there's a lot of skill on one team and not so much on the other team and, you know, legitimate bumps and holds and grabs are happening. Um, that's, that's when it can be a little challenging. I think that's a fair point. Um, listening to you speak, though, what I hear is there's holding and grabbing and they're making you call. So you are using your judgment to say, 
if I don't call that, like, yeah, it's just going to write them down. So yeah, we have to determine whether it's making an advantage or a disadvantage. I just think it happens at the boys level too, but at the girls level, there's not enough thinking. There's too much reaction foul. I got it. And they're right. And not enough. Let me, okay. Can that girl play through that bump? Can that girl play through that reach that knocked her hand, but the ball didn't come loose. Right. I think that's kind of where I'm trying to get more to the, the stuff where anybody would watch it and say, eh, yeah, if you didn't blow your whistle, I guess that'd be okay. Yeah. I see the foul, but right. Not the ones where it totally affects the player or the team. And like I said, if it happens over and over and over and over, yeah, eventually a, 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 an officials will be like, well, I got, I'm just got to start calling it. Cause if you don't stop, it's not the kid that continually does the same thing over and over. Yep. If they continually, then they clearly don't get what they're doing or, and hopefully you're trying to talk to the kids a little bit and just boom, foul, boom, boom. Yeah. After three fouls, they're going to be sitting on the bench and then you don't have to worry about it. Absolutely. Cause I, I've, you know, rough games where the, the ball handler is so strong that he wants the defender to reach. He gets past them. It's a layup. Then you play the same game and that defender who's reaching steals the ball every single time yeah. because he's using his offhand as leverage to get around, to get that ball. And so at those points, you're talking through it, hands off, hands off. Uh, and then they do it. And so, so you see that it's an advantage for him. And then I have to put more whistles on it. Play fast again. It happens on uh, that end of the floor. Up the table. Looks like he kind of gives him a little bump, maybe. Yeah, that's that's pretty lame, actually. Yeah, I let that go. Right, and the and the kid is even like, huh? Both both of them are like, huh? <laughs> I mean, and look at who made the call. He's not even in the picture yet. The trail no, he's way far in back. the picture yet. Now, it's on center's side. Center made the call. All right. It's on yeah. center's side, but this is a fast break. And in my opinion, the lead's going to get this. Doesn't mean the lead can see all of it, right? There might be something else that happened. But what happened? If you watch the play develop... He passes the ball with all intention of passing the ball. He wasn't even thinking about shooting. Yeah. You just took two points away from that team who probably just executed a play they've been running in practice. Correct. Yeah, I mean, and that's really, that's not much of a foul. I mean, for that's definitely, I, I, I don't like that call. But again, you know, <laughs> we don't know the whole game, and, but, but that seemed pretty lame. Have you ever talked to your partner after a foul like that and said, what did you see? Or like, yeah, I didn't like it. it. Happens. Yeah. He might not have liked it either and thought, oh, darn it. I just, right? And maybe he's, so again, if we train ourselves, wait, just wait a second. Yep, yeah, there's a foul. I'm going to wait. Okay. Yeah, it affected it, right? I mean, you could do that in a second of time and, and determine. So that's kind of the point of watching all this. I want to try and find this one. And three for Alexander. Baller man to man. Murray there. with it straight now down you the see lane. Why they don't play it? Yep, they right beat him right away. Here we got a whistle by the center. I don't have a slowdown on this one either. Whistle by the center. And three for Alexander. Baller man to man. Murray there. with it straight now down the lane. Did you see what he it? called? Yep, they beat him right away. Right off the bounce. Foul. Did anybody see what he called? A slap. Called a hand check, didn't he? I think what he called was the reach from behind here. Yeah, right. Now, the center is the only one who's probably going to see this. And to be honest, the coach probably saw it too. Maybe the coach was even yelling for it. But if it's me, I'm passing. He has beaten that defender and has the whole lane all to himself. And what does he do? Score two points. Easy layup. <laughs> That was exactly what I was talking about, you know, uh, and you, you have to kind of evaluate. And three for Alexander. Baller man to man. 
Murray there. with it straight now down the lane. Now you see why they don't play it. Yep, they right beat there. him right away. He right waved the at him. Foul him. Yeah, he could have held off one second more, and, and he would have let it go. Now, I, I'm just watching this again closer. Did he count the bucket? And three for Alexander. Baller man to man. Murray there. with it straight now down you the see lane. why they don't play it. Yep, they right beat him Oh, no, right he waved away. it off, and he's pointing out a bucket. Okay. Foul him. Yeah, that's not a continuous motion, but all right. So we all saw that one. That one was a not an easy, but yeah, he got hit, but totally the advantage was just to let it play on and go up. And Nibs gets it for Ben Davis. Now Sharp trying to push here, spins in traffic, and he got oh, it away to Moore, but he was fouled. And center calls the official. To... Uh, center calls the official. Center official calls the foul. And Nibs gets it for Where's the ball right now? Where's the ball? Then it's, it's going to be in the lead's primary. That's yeah. It looks like it's the center, right? But that's the lead. This is a fast break. Where there, it's, a a lead. it's a transition. It is on the strong side of the court. Right. Now that doesn't mean the the center shouldn't be aware, but the center should not be watching that play. Right. Yeah, we should be watching these two players. Where does the foul happen? Whose that's area? Right. Lead. Lead. Who should be watching this play? Lead. Now, again, doesn't mean the center shouldn't be, you know, she doesn't have much else to watch, and she's in there. I get it. But who do you think has the best look at everything that's going on here? Lead. Lead. And then what does this player do? He drives. He starts his drive in, and it develops into a an illegal pivot, I think. <laughs> He pivots into three players, and this player is so smart. Now, as an official, what are we gonna? What are we thinking here? What are we anticipating? We're anticipating a shot, right? He's right. probably gonna go yes. up, and there's three people surrounding him. So, what's probably gonna happen? It's probably gonna get fouled. Do we agree? Yeah. Doesn't mean he will, but now we're at a heightened sense saying, okay, I'm ready for a foul if it happens. I'm ready for a foul if it happens. Maybe he's going to have a nice clean block. But she doesn't wait because, her look, her arm's going up already, which means she, she probably saw something right around here. Okay, maybe something happened, but I'm waiting for him to go up so he can try and get two points on a shot. But what does he do? He passes it to a kid who's wide open. If she would have waited one second, more, but he was fouled. Just wait one Fired second, two. she would have seen. Oh, I got nothing here. Kid totally passed it around. Do we that agree? Great. That was a great pass. <laughs> it was a really great pass. And I'm not harping on her. Right? She's the one who called it, so that's why I'm talking about it. But her partner was right in front of the play. If I'm her partner, I mean, I'm not going to yell at her, but I'm going to be ticked. Hey, what are you doing? I saw the whole play. I saw it start here in my area, come all the way down in my area, stop in my area, go up in my area, pass out. of. You shouldn't be calling that. It's right in front of me. Now, if I'm eight feet away, okay, fine. You can come in and you can help. All right. Now, look at the coach. Now, I'm not saying coaches are always right because they, they question us all the time. I get it. But the coach is kind of like, Huh? What just happened? Did he bump him? He knocked him off balance, right? He came in. Minor. He reached a little bit, and he did knock him off balance. Okay, so yes, it by rule was a foul. But what does he do? He passes it very easily to his teammate yeah who that has now a chance just a little quick i think it was just a little quick he could have held it for sure i mean he, even 44 just by the look the look he even knew that that was quick he's playing hard 44 is playing just hard and he tries to stop he bumps him a little right my point is how i kind of said before no one's going to yell at you if you call it but if you don't call it. No one's going to yell at you either because there they're like, uh, 
huh, what? Because basketball, that's basketball. And there's contact in basketball. And that's why they wrote in rule 427, incidental contact. Because you're going to have contact that you're going to pass on because it was incidental. It didn't affect the play. The spirit and intent of the rule, they, which they have in the beginning of the rules book, nobody ever reads it because it's not part of the rules. But the spirit and intent of the rules is to get the rules that cause an advantage or disadvantage to the opponent. And that did neither, in my opinion. Yes, did it affect his RB, TSQ, or whatever that is? Rhythm, balance, speed, quickness? Yeah, I guess you could say it did, but it didn't affect basketball. He passed it to his teammate, and basketball continued on, right? We all saw that. All right. No good. McQuan pushes the basketball. They're going to call it. Let me play it again. No good. McQuan pushes the basketball. They're going to call it. Okay, official calls a hole, as you can see. I, I just want to point this out. I don't have this in the clip, but you see the blue player at the top of the key kind of falling? Yeah. yeah. And then you, you see the coach react? No good. So maybe that had something to do with it. He thought there was a foul. We didn't get the foul. Maybe we missed the foul, and so he got a quick foul as kind of a makeup. I'm not saying it's right, but maybe that's a psychological uh, thought process. McQuan pushes the basketball. We're taking that out of it. They're going to call it. Did the kid grab his hand? Was there actually by rule a foul? Couldn't see it. The answer is yes. He grabs his hand here. The ball oh, is go. loose. He yeah. grabs his hand, pulls it back so he get. But then what happens? Goes in for a layup. The kid gets the ball. So yes, he grabbed his hand and he tried to keep him from getting it and he pulled his hand away. But he got the ball and he took off and he still had the easy bucket to go in. We wait one second, half a second or second and a half on that when we don't need a whistle. We agree on that one? Oh, yeah, for sure. Again, yeah. by rule, that's totally a foul. But watch, wait, see what happens. And then, okay, no one's going to say, how did you not call him, grab him on the arm? No, of course not, because he got the two points easily. All right, was that helpful? Yeah. Yes. What should we, I, I know, I'm going to play a block charge because that's going to be next month is block charge. I got to finish the season of meetings. It's our last meeting of the basketball season, I guess you could say. June, we have nothing because that's clinic month but we're going to end with block charge let me see what i can find let's watch this one no whistle can you guys hear the sound the guy in the stands goes how's that not a whistle Do you have a foul here or are you passing That's a charge. He moved three guys. <laughs> Don't say he doesn't have a legal guarding position because what is he doing right here? He's standing and waiting for him. Is he not? Oh, for sure. Yep. So he's got a legal guarding position. Now, I'll say this. He starts to fall a little, and I can't see any lateral movement if he went up after he went airborne. I don't know about that. We're just going to talk about what we can see. He starts to fall back a little bit on his own. Is he allowed to do that? Yes. Yes. All right. Now, if there's no contact when he does that, we've got no foul. Yes? Yes. Right. Right. Okay. So there has to be contact for there to be a foul. It looks like there is some contact, and it might be slight. It might not be a ton, but where does this player start? Okay, he starts right here, okay? And where does he end up? The player went all the way to the beneath the basket, basically. So if he had stood there and just taken it, he would have got killed. Yes? For yeah. sure. Yeah. So I'm going to allow him 
that backward movement to absorb that contact because otherwise he's going to really hurt himself. And I think that's a foul. Charge. Now the lead probably has the best look at it because it's coming his way, but he might not be able to see how much contact of sort there is because he's straight lined a bit. All right. So I'm going to give him somewhat of a pass. I think the trail, if the trail comes in a little bit, is going to have a better chance to come in and get that. And the center even, who should be maybe a little bit lower, because he should be free throw line extended, yes? For sure. He's yeah. not there yet. Is this a transition play? Let's see. It's a transition. Yeah. So they're all behind the play because of the transition. I get that. Yeah, but the lead, the lead gets there. It's a, he's in good position, Josh. Look, he's he, he can see through there to no, look at him. I'm not giving the lead a pass completely. What I'm saying is any one of the officials on this court can get that call. Now, the trail's probably going to be a little too far behind because of transition. So I'm going to let the trail off the hook because he's still trying to run over. That's fine. But I think the center can come in and get that. It's right down the middle of the lane. He's probably got the best angle or should have the best angle. I'm not saying lead shouldn't get it. Lead should get it. Right. But those two guys, somebody's got to blow their whistle on that. Yeah, the C was in great position. All he needed to do is, you know, follow the play a little bit more, and then I think he would have gotten a charge. He just stopped. Well, that's his call. That's his call anyway. He's got the, the, the play is coming out of his area. He's got to right. follow that. that. That is his call. That's, right. the, so, that's, a, that's a C's call. So here's here's the psychology psychology of the play, in my opinion. And I spoke to one of the guys, and I watched the whole game. And it was, it was a rough game. This actually, I think, was double overtime. It might have been triple overtime. It was one of those games where it was just, and there was a lot of action, a lot of contact, and there were a lot of charges and a lot of blocks, either called right or wrong. We're not going to discuss, but there was a lot of that action. Psychologically, I think as officials, one, we don't like getting yelled at, right? And when you blow your whistle, you're going to increase the chance of getting yelled at. So that's part of it. Two. You just had three block charges in a row. Jeez, and then I got another one. Maybe I'm just going to pass on that one. Was it enough to, oh, that wasn't as bad as the last one, right? So psychologically, even though it's not um, consciously, I think subconsciously we're finding reasons to kind of, right? But we've got to watch. This kind of comes in with start, develop, finish. You see it start, I, okay. you see it develop, and you see the kid on the ground and finish. Like that, we got to call something. Yeah, I agree with 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 that logic, but we got to get that logic out of our heads. I mean, that that was clearly a pretty a pretty egregious charge. I'm I agree with you, Mike, and I'm not making this up to say, okay, they're all right. We'll let them go. No, we got to get it. We have to be aware that psychologically we are affected. That subconsciously we may not we may be holding our whistle back for this reason or that, and if we can overcome that and every play is new, and every play is fresh. And so when that play happens, it should be the first block charge that happened that you've seen, even though you saw 15 of them beforehand. Your yeah. brain is a the play by play by play by play, right? And that's not a start, develop, finish, patient whistle. Yeah, we can pass on that. The that's kid went down because he went right through him. I like block charge games. I yeah. like ones when there's 15, 20 of them. I don't know why. I just like punching it down and <laughs> that's probably an ego thing right you want the coach to know i'm in charge that's a charge every day <laughs> so all right so uh well i mean i think you know josh you say this all the time and i and i and it's really ingrained in my my head why are we pen penalizing the defense for an excellent you know position and an excellent play we we, we need to reward them for that and and for sure, that guy was. I mean, that guy knocked the other guy away too. So I mean, it was pretty. It was pretty egregious. Yeah, he might have been falling backwards, but he didn't want to take, you know, a huge hit. And a lot of guys, a lot of guys will say, uh, "Well, how's that not a charge, Coach? He was falling backward. He didn't take the hit. What? That's... <laughs> Unless he's falling backward, and which causes there not to be any contact, which is possible." then I would agree with that. 
the kosher, there was no contact. He fell backward and there was no contact. If he would have just taken some of it, I could have caught something, but you know, I can't call a foul for intent, right? If I swing at you and miss you, it's not a foul because I meant to hit you. Obviously a punch is different, but. <laughs> All right, that's it. What do you All guys right. think? Good, it was nice. Good, Josh. Good. Next month in May, May 26, block charge which is why we watched that last video. All right, May 26th. All right, so May 26th, that is Memorial Day weekend. Hopefully you're not gone already. You're gonna wait till Friday to take off the, the long weekend. If you do, that's fine too, but um, tune in, more block charges. I didn't have any diagrams and drawings today. I just didn't know how to do that with, with these plays. Um, next month, we're gonna have lots of them. So I'll show you the LGP and, and the player running through and the player sliding over and the defender, you know, jumping up and uh, we'll have a lot of fun with it. So you guys have any questions? All good. No, no. that's good. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, right. Josh. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks right. for coming on guys. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next month. All right. Super. Have a great weekend. Take care. Take care. Thanks, Josh. See you.